Okay, folks, we're going to be making a start very soon. If you'd like to uh, take your seats, make yourself comfortable. Just to remind you that this, uh, this town's forum is going to be streamed live on YouTube. So you should be at work. You might want to disappear behind the door now. I thought better last, last time with that joke, so I might have to think of something new for next time. But just to remind you that you are going to be on YouTube and that is going out live. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest tonight, Will Ainson and Dimitri Mitchell. <laughs> Welcome gentlemen and uh, many thanks for coming out tonight. It's lovely to see you. Um, hope you're going to enjoy the evening. It's about three hours of talk from you. <laughs> have, you uh, have you ready for it? Um, no, seriously. We're about 45 minutes chatting about where you've come from, what you're doing here, how you got here, what you think to being here, and then questions from the audience and maybe from people from, uh, from YouTube. Nothing difficult, we're all friendly. No trick questions. Um, so let's get going. And um, well, a little bit about you. I've checked my sources, Mr. Wikipedia, so obviously it's right. Started off at Eastley, then Hull, Blackpool, where you played against us in the playoff, is that right? Yeah, we don't speak about that anymore. But, good now. A bit of time at Bury, and then two seasons at that team at the bottom end of the A38, uh, then at Bolton, and now 
over here. Is that right? That sounds right, yeah. Okay, Dimitri, you started off at uh, a little club in Manchester. Yeah, a little one, yeah. <laughs> little one there. Uh, Hearts, and you were at Blackpool as well. Yep. And Hibs. And you've done a little bit for England. A little bit, a little bit. And uh, now you're here. So, that, that's correct, that's good. That's yeah, correct. Your Wikipedia must be right, yeah. Wikipedia is right. That's, that's nice to know. Um, so, Dimitri, how, how have you found it coming to Exeter from, so, from those other clubs? What's the big, main, the, big, the big difference between those clubs? I think um, I've, I've played in Scotland and I've played in England twice, so at Blackpool and here, and at Hearts and Hibernian. And um, there's a big difference for me in terms of playing in England and playing in Scotland. For me, down here, playing in a league that's competitive, you're trying to get promotion and you've got the the thing of getting relegated as well, you're playing for something, so when, when I've been up in Scotland previously, it's been, um, you're not really playing for much, you know, that like you're not really going to get relegated and you've got certain kind of ranges where they're challenging for the title and you can't really compete with them because they've got so much money, so I think being in England, being at Exeter, the, um, the club as a whole, it's a very tight-knit group and, and the fans are very good and uh, I found that at Blackpool as well, so I've drawn similarities with it, with it, with it there. And I, that's probably where I play my best football when you've got the backing of manager, player and the fans. And Will, um, a few clubs. Um, the main difference between sort of Exeter and some of the other clubs you've played at, what, what have you found the main difference so far? Um, I mean, firstly, I think, you know, Demi will say this as well, it's been very enjoyable. Um, you know, we're all settled and I've really enjoyed the first, you know, month or two that I've had here. Um, you know, I've played at some big clubs, i played at, no disrespect, but obviously smaller, smaller clubs. Um, you know, we can tell it's a very family-orientated club, um, you know, part of the reason for me coming. Um, so yeah, it's uh, not too not too much different, but um, similar little little bits and bobs, yeah. So compared to um, compared to say something like uh, Blackpool and Bury when you are up north, is it a different style of football down here for you? Different atmosphere in the grounds? Um, you know, slightly. I think one thing we've got is a is a great groundsman. Um, the pitch is uh, fantastic. Don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, to be fair to him, the pitch is is brilliant all year round. So you know, that normally this time you you come up on some difficult difficult pitches. But this you know this allows us to play the the, the style of football that we want to play. Um, and trust me, we do play on some bad pitches over the season. So now we're we're very lucky to have that. Um, you know, we've, we've got a great fan, ba fan base here. Um, we, we travel really well, um, as shown at the weekend, and you know, home games it's, it's electric. So yeah, it's it's good. Dimitri, are you finding um, are you finding the fans um, getting behind the team as as much as you want them to be? Yeah, massively. Um, if I'm honest, I didn't realise how big the support was before we came here. The away games. I remember the first game I played at um, MK Dons. And we were a lot louder than them, and it wasn't there wasn't a half, probably half as many. So obviously on a weekend as well, going to um, Cheltenham again, louder than them. So yeah, the, the fans have been really good. And do you do you actually hear the fans cheering you on? Do you, does that make a difference to your what you're thinking, what you're feeling, how you're going to play? Yeah, massively. The the almost like a twelfth man. Um, you know, it's a few flares flown up, thrown about in the last game. <laughs> um, yeah. Which um, which is good to see that the fans are so so behind us. Um, but yeah, it makes a massive difference. To be honest, for me personally. And you f you find that that does drive you on to achieve bigger and better. Yeah, things. yeah. Uh, obviously, we we try as much as possible to to show our support. We we'll go round before the game, and and that that's how much it means to us. After the game, we we'll go round and and give a clap. So yeah, it means it means loads to all of us. So. Um, how much of a factor of um, coming down to Exeter was Gary Caldwell in your decision in uh, in coming coming here? Yeah, uh, a, a massive a massive factor really. Um, you know, we met and we spoke before signing, um, and we you know we got on well. He obviously sold it to me quite well, as as now I'm sat here. But no, it was. Um, I actually, when I, when I played for Bolton, and I think we we played Exeter late December, early January. Um, obviously, we won't talk about the result, but uh, yeah, it was um, it was one that stuck out for me. That in terms of the way Exeter played, um, 
the style of the football and it was 2-0 but it was it wasn't as straightforward as a 2-0 one as you as you think and then obviously speaking to Gary you know and, and playing against his team and how they played it was it was definitely an attractive one for me um, and they were able to get it done yeah and um, being given the captaincy uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> was that a surprise for you uh, I mean, yeah, a little bit. We briefly touched on it, but I didn't know. You know I didn't know whether it was going to happen. Um, you know, he said he wanted me to come into the team and play that role, whether it would be wearing the captain's armband or not. Um, obviously, it's a massive honour to to lead the boys out and, and be captain. Um, but I'd like to think we've got, you know, four or five captains in that changing room at least. You know, a few experienced players. One sat next to me here. Um, he's, he's getting on a bit now, so I'd like to call you experience. But, uh, poor, um, old, poor old thing. How are you managing? <laughs> yeah. But no, yeah, like I said, um, I'd like to think we've got five or six of them on the pitch. So whether I'm wearing it or not, you know, it's, as I said, it's a massive honour. But, you know, we're all, we're all club together and, and trying to try to play that leading role. And going forward to the sort of the last ten games of the season, what, what's the feeling? What's the mood in the camp? Yeah, it's positive. Obviously, it's a, a disappointing week, uh, weekend for us. Um, just gone, you know, we were starting to put a run together and get some consistency in results. I think performances have been there, um, and we weren't quite getting what we what we deserved from games, which was frustrating for us. Um, we were just on the wrong side of fine margins, if you like, in games, which, like I say, weren't really going for us. So, yeah, that was disappointing, and you know, we're hoping that's. Well, we're going to make sure as well that that was just a small blip. You know, it's done now. We've we've looked through it. We've we've been in Monday, Tuesday, and we've gone through it, and we know we know what not to do now. So, um, yeah, we we want to finish as high as possible. It'd be good to finish, you know, at the top of the team, like top of the teams that came up into this division, um, and finishing the top half of the table. And you know, we'll see where we end up. So Thursday and Friday. I know you can't give too much away. But it's more tactical stuff now, is it? Sort of getting working out how to break down Accrington? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as the week goes on, you know, we'll we'll, we'll look at them early on in the week and see see how see how we can break them down and see see how we're going to stop them at the same time. And then towards the end of the week, we'll start really focusing and working out a game plan to to go and beat them. Yeah. So um, something to look forward to. Big game. We need to win this one. Obviously, don't need to get back on track good mood in the camp yeah definitely everyone's like I said everyone's really positive we've obviously with the additions in January we've got competition for places we've got a really really strong squad um, so now it's a great atmosphere um, everyone's together and we've you know one final push now for these last 10 games and we'll finish as high as possible now I know you're quite new to the club so you may have not seen the the old Cliff Hill buildings or used them much so these new buildings that uh, out in the training ground that must be must have helped your decision coming into Exeter, seeing seeing what's there. I don't even know, so I just came. I just came regardless. <laughs> 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 no, I didn't know, but to be fair, the facilities there, like we've got a new chef in. I'm sure you've all seen um, on the socials and the foods, like it's tremendous now compared to what we was getting before and what we're getting now. It's it's a massive difference, and you know, lads are being able to get like top quality food compared to even what I've had at, at Manchester United it's it's of the same level so you know that's really beneficial for us we can take food home and obviously that leads into the game on to Saturday so being able to have that the resources of the gym as well these are those little one percents that now you're getting into now we're into league one these are the things that can help us build and, and finish higher up in seasons to come as well so you think that that will attract more players to come do you think yeah 100%. So seen that type of facility 100 percent. like i said um the facilities are really good there and for me i didn't know myself but if i did know it would have made the decision even easier but with me with the for me it was a manager that pulled me here mainly and um, i'd worked for him i'd worked with him before in summer doing like one-to-one -one sessions and um, it was after i left manchester united uh I was struggling to get back fit. I just come off the back of a long injury, and, and um, my agent put me in contact with with the gaffer, and we done some one-to-one -one sessions, and it went really well. He got me back playing, got me got me a contract at Blackpool through through the fitness that I done with him, and you know it it paid off. So yeah, that was a real pull for me. So it was quite an easy conversation, was it? Quite an easy decision for you to come here? Yeah, massively. I, was, I wasn't playing at Hibernian. I wasn't happy, and for me, I just need to be playing football. That's when I'm the most happiest. And right now, since being here. I say it's been a 10 out of 10 decision. My missus is happy with my little one here. 
you know, the weather's a lot better than Scotland. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's ticking all the boxes right now. Wait until it's, it's warmer rain down here, isn't it? <laughs> it's warmer rain, yeah. <laughs> I imagine the same for you, Will. It's quite an easy decision once you had a chat and saw what, what the area had to offer. Yeah, definitely, obviously, being from Bournemouth, I've grew up on the coast. Um, you know, I've lived down this way somewhere <laughs> before. So, um, and my girlfriend came down with me there, and uh, I think she was more excited than, than I was to come back down there, to be honest. She, she was applying for jobs. I'd only had one conversation with, with the gaffer, and I think she already had a job. So, um, yeah, no, she's, she's delighted. She's delighted to be down there as well. But it wasn't, for me, it wasn't, wasn't a tough decision. Um, you know, there was, there was other clubs interested, but, you know, this was, this was at the top of the list for me. It was everything that, you know, I needed in terms of, you know, being a being part of the furniture in the club, if you want to say. Um, you know, regular game time, and, and that's exactly what I wanted. Well, you signed for two and a half years, so you must have been impressed and committed and wanting to come in and make a mark and help the club move on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I saw it as a massive opportunity. You know, the club's on the up. Um, like, like you say, you just touched on the training ground. It's, um, I could say it's probably up there and the top 10% really in this league, I'd say. Um, there won't be many better, apart from obviously you know, the Europe switches and, and, and things like that, probably. But no, it's, um, it's exciting times, really, at this club, definitely. Fantastic. Now, talking about that club down the road, big Devon derby coming up soon. Mm. What are your feelings going to be about that? Well, I've still got friends there, but they won't be, that, they won't be my friends on that day. I can... Uh, <laughs> I could tell you that one, and I'll be celebrating off a score as well. I'll tell you. <laughs> but um, no, it's this. We've got we've got a great month of games. We we can test ourselves against teams at the top of of this decision uh, decision uh, division. So um, now it's that, the, these are the games you want to play in. Um, obviously, the, the derby should be a should be a close close game. Um, but it's one we're all definitely looking forward to anyway. So when you step on the pitch and you against ex colleagues. For that 90 minutes, your ex-colleagues, and you forget everything else, and you just go out to win and try and get the better of them? Yeah, definitely. I think the longer you've been in football, you, you pretty much know at least someone in every game. Um, I've had to, to mark close mates in, in the past, um, but like, like you say, that all goes out the window as soon as, as soon as you step over the line. So, What's the banter like on the pitch? Or isn't there much banter? Depends. Depends who it is I'm playing against. If it's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, some players do. Some players do speak speak a lot. Yeah, don't talk and play is uh, is normally a saying. So, so did you ask you what you're doing afterwards and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bit of social going on. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I've lost my train of thought there. Um, no, I've lost completely lost it. Uh, <laughs> so you think for 24? Uh, sorry, for 23, 24 season, key season for us. See, making us make a real push to moving on out of the division. Yeah, I mean that's obviously that's that's the aim. I think where we are now is definitely an achievement if we can, you know, stay in that top half and maybe try and catch one of those teams that are in. The, like you said, the, the league is for some years now is kind of split um, every year. It's, it's kind of like a top eight, nine, ten teams that seem to pull away. So it'd be great to try and get into that chunk and be consistently in that chunk. Um, so, yeah, definitely like so. Dimitri, you must, be, you must be excited at that challenge and looking forward to try and get up there. Yeah, if you look at the style of football we play, for me, it's definitely one of the best in the league. Um, you know, and if we can eradicate a few little things in our game and, you know, maybe little lapses that we have here and there, I don't see why we can't kick on um, further next season. But, you know, for me personally, I like to focus on the here and now and, you know, finishing as high up as possible as we can and then building on that next year. Fantastic. That's what we want to hear. Thank you. So, um, going forward, um, end of season coming up soon. Uh, a bit of a break. What will you do during your break, do you think? Yeah, you made plans for that yet or are you just focusing on... on uh... I can't tell you all my plans. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'd like to... Um, yeah, the, gaffer will be, the gaffer will be watching, so you've got to be careful. <laughs> got a few holidays booked... Um, you know, when I was a younger player, I probably didn't do as much as I should have done on the off-season. And I think now I've realised that it's, it's important to, to have a break, but also to, to make sure that you keep on top of, of your body and, and making sure that you, you're doing the right things also as having, having enjoyment. So, yeah, like I said, a few holidays planned with the, with the, with the family, but, yeah, trying to, trying to keep up in, in good condition.
Uh, and Will, where's your girlfriend going to be taking you around Devon during summer? God knows. <laughs> God knows. Uh, now we'll, um, I'll be going back home to Bournemouth to see the fam. Uh, my older brother's just had a little, little boy not too long ago, so it'll be great to go and spend some time with him. A lot of golf will be played. Um, there's a couple of keen golfers in the, in the camp, so I'm sure we'll be getting on the, on the course. Um, and then a couple of holidays, similar to Dimmy. Um, so yeah, but like Dimmy said, and, and touched on, staying on top of things, now, now you get a little bit older is, is, is massive. You need to rest like, mentally and physically. You need to let your body you know, almost calm down after the season, but you need to quickly get back on top of it at the same time and keep yourself going. So you've had a day off, you've had a day off today, yeah? Yeah. So you've got training, obviously, tomorrow, Thursday, uh, Thursday and Friday, match Saturday. So before Barnsley, what will you do? What will Sunday and Monday look like before the Tuesday night match? Yeah, well, as well, as far as I'm aware, we'll be, we'll be off Sunday. Um, and in Monday, you know, the boys that played will, will recover. Um, and, you know, the other lads that, that have come on and, or, or didn't come on or weren't involved, you know, they'll, they'll do a training session, I imagine. And then we'll probably dissect the game. And then once that's done, that's done, we, we, look, at, we look at Barnsley. So it doesn't stop, does it? No, it doesn't. It's uh, full throttle, yeah. OK, enough from me for a minute. Um, I was gonna, anybody who would like to ask a question, I can come down and hand over the microphone. And um, if somebody like from the public would like to, uh, from the floor, would like to ask a question. Don't all rush at once. They're very nice. They'll treat you gently. A question from the floor. Hold on. And then. Uh, question from Dimitri. We need it for. Um, when you. Just speak into it. Dimitri, when. Yeah. Is that working? Yeah. Dimitri, when you signed for um, Hibernian. Yeah. Were you relieved to find that everything that you've been told when you were at uh, Heart of Midlothian wasn't actually true and there were some nice people at, at, Heart, at um, Hibernian after all? No, Hibernian was a, it was a really nice club. I was just um, unfortunate with injuries. So, no, it was, um, I didn't realise what... To be honest, when I went to Hibernian, I didn't realise how massive the rivalry was because when I went there to Hearts, I was only... I think I was 19 or 20. Um, it's my first loan, so... Going back there, I was getting a lot of stick from the fans, um, and I remember I scored on my debut, and it kind of settled things. But yeah, even sometimes going to the corner shop, Hearts fans would give me stick and stuff. So that was it was good. I enjoyed my time up there, but um, yeah, focused on the here and now. Sorry, there's a question. Is that a question over here? Sorry, it's for Dimitri again. Um, going back to Scotland, how does the level of football in Scottish Premiership compared with League One in England? Is it faster, slower, or what? How have you found, how have you found this sort of it's transition? A, it's a great question. It's a great question. I'd say um, it's, there's, there's a lot of different levels in Scotland, even though there's only 12 teams. So obviously you've got your Celtic and Rangers, who are probably leaps ahead. And then you've got probably a small chunk of Hearts, Hibernian, and Aberdeen, which is like the next level, which I'd say is probably, that's probably like a, mid to high League One standard and then the rest of the teams kind of fluctuate between League One and League Two so there's a lot going on in one league which makes some sometimes it's difficult to, to gauge it really but um, the ball's in the air a lot more which probably doesn't suit my game because I'm only 5'8 <laughs> and, um, and you're playing on also a lot of astral pitches which personally like, I don't like I prefer playing on pitches like we have here um, you're training on grass every day and, it, and it's a lot it's a lot more similar, whereas when sometimes you're going away to Livingston's and, and Hamilton's, you know, you're training on grass and then you're playing on astral turf, which is, is quite different. Thank you. Anybody else, anybody else got a question? <laughs> so this is for both of you. Um, but Dimitri mentioned it a bit earlier about the, the flare being flown, thrown onto the pitch on Saturday. At that particular time, we had just levelled. We were the only team playing football. Um, we had the momentum going with us, and I thought there was only going to be one winner. Did the, the break that, you know, because it seemed to take an age for Cheltenham to work out how to get rid of that flair, did that impact upon you? You know, because at that time you had the momentum going to you, but it just seemed an age before the game got going again. Yeah, I mean... You could say that. We, we won't sit here and, and blame that. You know, we're still responsible and we're still 
it's still up to us to, to get the job done at the end of the day. Um, you know, it probably didn't help, but it's still, it's, I don't think it was a major factor in, in what happened. Like I said, we still, it was the same, you know, for both teams and we had to deal with that. Um, and I still think, you know, it was in our hands to, to like I say, get the job done and, and go and win that game. So, um, yeah. Yeah, um, like Will said, you know, both of us had to, both teams had to deal with it, so it's not really an excuse that we can have. Obviously, when you've just scored, you want to kind of go again quickly um, to kind of try and keep the pressure on. But um, like Will said, it's no excuse. Um, yeah, we, we was on top. We had, we had a lot of possession and, you know, and a lot of chances. So, yeah. OK, thank you. Anybody else would like to ask a question? Don't be shy. OK, a couple of questions for me again then. Um, best stadium that you've played in? Or when, you go in, when you're going away, which stadium do you like to look forward to playing? Ever? Or, ever? Or in, in the league? Ever and then in this league? Uh, ever was probably my home debut for Manchester United playing at Old Trafford. That's against Crystal Palace, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. So I'd say that was probably the best experience playing in the stadium. Um, and other than here... I've not played too many. I've not played too many, too many games away, really. So, so far, there's not been anything to that sticks out for me, really. Probably better asking Will that one. Before you go, what's the worst stadium? Can you say? Ah, the um, was it Port Vale? <laughs> it's not so much the stadium. The pitch was horrendous. The pitch was horrendous. It was the worst. The worst I played on in a while, to be honest. So, you know, when we try and play the football, we do. It doesn't help, and I think sometimes teams kind of can pick up on that and maybe not sort the pitch as good as they could have to kind of stop us from playing the way we like to. Um, but yeah, definitely Port Vale away. And Will, same question to you. Best and worst? Well, I can't top the best. I don't think anyone... I think that is one of the best places you can play. Uh, I think the best one I played at was Steven Gerrard's first game at Rangers. Although it was a pre-season game, it was his first home game in charge. Um, and I think they were going into the Europa League qualifying the following week. Um, so they'd been back, I think, a good five weeks already. Uh, we'd been back a week and not even touched the balls. <laughs> so we got taught a lesson that day. I think it was uh, it was 3-0 three, three after maybe 50 minutes. And my other centre-back next to me was actually used to play for Celtic. And he looked at me and said, that's it, no more. And the next five minutes had gone by and it was 5-0. <laughs> <laughs> so ended up 6-0. But... You know, it's, it, they were in a different league that day, but that was, you know, that was a brilliant atmosphere. Obviously, you would have played at that or, or seen that ground. Um, and I think, it, you know, in this league, ones that you look forward to, you've obviously got the the big ones of the Sheffield Wednesdays and the Ipswiches, the great atmospheres. You know, Bolton was one where I enjoyed playing at home every week. We got some, we got some good crowds. Um, as for the worst, I'd probably have to agree with you on on that one. I think they'd. Had a tractor over the pitch for, for a week or something like that. I don't know what they were doing there. So, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't enjoyable on that. So just to, it's annoying this, but Chaz does do a good job. No, no, he does. It's uh, to be honest, any time I've ever played here, no matter what time of the year, as as the visiting team, it's always been a carpet. So fair play to him and, and the other boys. They're they're brilliant there. Yeah. So. Um, what advice would you give now to, um, say, 16, 17-year-old boy or girl who's on the cusp of going into football? What advice, now you know what you know, what advice would you give them to move their career forward? I think a big thing is you're going to have, you're going to have setbacks and you're going to be told no. You're going to be told you're not good enough. Um, I had it at Hull uh, in my first year. I'd only gone from Eastleigh. I was at college doing like my education I was and I went from from easily in the conference south into a, a championship club and I was told by Steve Bruce after maybe three four months that he didn't think this was for me um, and he said I could leave if I wanted um, I'd signed a year's contract and I said to I knew I wasn't at the level one but I was taking time for my body to get used to that kind of full-time football and you know he sat me down at the end of the year and uh but well, I told him firstly when he pulled when he pulled me in, I said I'll get to the level that I know I can get to, and if it's still not enough, then fair enough, we'll shake hands and I'll move on. Um, and he sat me down at the end of the year and he said, I have to hold my hands up. Not many people will be able to do what you've just done, but I'm going to offer you a new contract. Um, 
So I think it's things like that. You have to understand that there will be setbacks. Um, football is a game of opinions. Um, and nothing nothing comes easy in this game. And it's, it's quite a ruthless world. But I think if you work hard enough and you're dedicated enough, um, you'll get opportunities. And it's just about taking those opportunities and, and staying on top of it, yeah. Because you've both had injuries. Mm -hmm. So how easy or difficult, I imagine more difficult than easy, to get back to the level that you were before your injury? How, how do you mentally get yourself around that? Yeah, they're obviously testing times, really. I broke my leg at, at Hull. Um, I was on loan at Tranmere and played a game in 10 minutes, I think it was. I had a yellow card, an own goal, and a broken leg. So it was quite an eventful... <laughs> And a man of the match as well, the known guard. I, I think someone must have been quite drunk doing that. I don't, uh, but yeah, um, no, it is. It's, it's difficult. Um, you haven't really, I think, sulking. And as much as it is, it's upsetting. You, you know, you, you're going into the gym every day, watching the boys go out and train, and you're turning up on a Saturday, sat in the stands, and you know, watching the watching the boys out on the pitch. It's not nice at all. But I think the quicker you come to terms with it, get your head around it. Um, I was lucky. I had, you know good family, good friends around me um, for support and the managers and staff at the time and players. So, um, there's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not nice at all. But like I said, the quicker you come to terms with it and try and, try and turn it into a positive and um, get yourself back out there as, as quick and as fit as, as possible, yeah. Dimitri, same? Yeah. Um, for me, I think when, I, when I've been injured and I know that there's, a, there's an end goal, so like a, a return day, I'm, I'm not too bad, but you know, sometimes when injuries are not going to plan and, and you can't get back as, as soon as, or you've had mishaps where, you know, you've had to go and have another operation again, that's where sometimes I've struggled. Um, and it's just important to keep keep a level head, I think, with the good and the bads in football. So, you know, when, when the highs are high, don't get too high. And, and when the lows are low, don't let it affect you too much. So at the moment, you know, I'm getting a bit older in my career now and I think it's um, important to just maintain a level head as much as you can, whether that's being injured, not in the team, or starting and scoring every week. So if you could go back 10 years yeah. to when you were 16 and you see where you are, would you be pleased to see where you are now? Would you, would you think that's you've done well, you're a success and you, you've achieved what you wanted to achieve? Um, I'd say no, because if I was to say yeah, I feel like I'd, I'd be saying that I've, I've, I've achieved everything I wanted to in football already at the age of 26 and I don't think that's the right attitude to have. I still believe that you know, I'm capable of achieving more in my career. So I'd say you're doing well, you're doing well so far, but you keep it going. And like I said, keep a level ahead and, and keep improving. And what about you? Because well, you're slightly older. What about you, Will? When, if you were to go back, you saw 12, 13 years in, in East Tea College and been through what you've been through and now you're here. What, what, would, you, what would you think? What would that 16-year-old say, do you think? I probably wouldn't have believed you back then <laughs> at 16 years old. Um, I don't know really. As much as you know, I had opportunities when I was younger to go to clubs um, quite a lot. You know, the southern-based ones, Southamptons and Portsmouth, and and Chelsea at the time. Um, but as mad as it sounds, I wasn't really that interested. I was almost going to go down a golf route and play golf. Um, that slowly ended when I started playing. <laughs> there were some good players about, but I always kind of had in the back of my head that I would be a footballer. I don't know what it was, but um, I think yeah, I've I've done a lot of. You know, good things. I've had a few promotions. I've played at Wembley in a playoff final. So, I think I'm. No need I, to remind us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Might have been against you. Look, but, um, no, I'm quite hard on myself. I actually talk about this with my girlfriend, and she always says you're so hard, like so hard on yourself with it. Because Demi will probably say, "We always, you want more. You want more." I'm never settled for what I've got. Um, we get beat at the weekend. It, it ruins your weekend to some degree. Um, my missus will be the first one to tell you that she gets doesn't get a peep out of me if we get beat. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's everything to us. So um, I'd say yeah, it, you know I, I think we can both be proud of what we've achieved. But I think we'll always say we want more. Uh, we want to get better. We want to still improve, whether we're 30 years old, whether we're 20 years old. So so no regrets so far then. No, I can't think of any. <laughs> Just beating you lot in the playoff final. <laughs> <laughs> You say the right things. Yeah, <laughs> I have to. And are you a scratch golfer? Not scratch, no. Uh, officially, six. Just gone up to six. I'm not happy about it from five. So, yeah, I'm not bad. Uh, there's a couple of other good players in the club. James Scott's a tremendous golfer. 
Sweeney's not bad, and uh, Groundsy's all right, I've heard as well. And now Hartridge meant to be meant to be alright. So you had a chance to get out yet, or obviously you're so busy training, you wouldn't have had a chance. Yeah, we've had a couple of games. Um, James James Scott's had one game and he's already been fitted for a new set of irons. So I'm quite interested to see how that's going to go. He says he's going to be incredible now. So uh, <laughs> we'll be uh, we'll be interested to see that. Do you partake, Dimitri, or um... no? But Will said he's going to teach me, so I'm still <laughs> waiting. <laughs> <laughs> um, just going back to you for a minute, Will. Um, your granddad, he played professional football. Has that helped you um, with going through what you went through, talking to him about what it was like for him? Yeah, I mean, he, he passed away when I was, I think, last year, of, I think I was year 10, year 11, so okay. 14, 15, 16 years old, something like that. Um, he, yeah, I mean, my dad obviously tells me a lot of stories and there's footage and of stuff of him playing, which is not a lot, not a lot but it's great to look back on and see. Um, you know, it's, I always wish that he could have seen me play, in, you know, in the stadium. He obviously watched me growing up. From, he'd never miss a game, whether it was my older brother, younger brother or, or me. The, he'd be at least one of them um, every weekend. So, yeah, I'd have loved it if he was able to, to watch me in some of these games. Um, he actually was quite funny. I used to be a striker, believe it or not. Um, I'm not when I was as gangly as this. Uh, that's probably why I got put at the back. But um, yeah, and then it was actually my dad that put me back to centre half. So I'd just be in the back of the car, looking out the window on the way in from a game, and them two would be in the front arguing about if I should be a striker or a centre half <laughs> every <laughs> every every Saturday or Sunday. Um, you never had a chance to uh, answer that question yourself. You just did what you told. Yeah, I just, I was just, you know, like as kids, we were just happy to be out there running around. <laughs> so, yeah. And even though you're not a golfer, Dimitri, you, you, you do, you're into, cl you're in, into your clothing, aren't you? Yeah, I've got my own clothing brand. Um, I actually started that when I got injured. Uh, I was out with a meniscus injury, which kept me out probably almost 12 months. So I started it thinking like. My contract was coming to an end at Manchester United. I was injured at the time, and I thought I need I need a backup plan, kind of. Um, and you know, as football is, we have a lot of, a lot of spare time on our hands. You know, football the training sessions are hard, but we get back sometimes about half two, three o'clock if we've not got gym in the afternoon. So, you know, having that spare time on on our hands sometimes. I remember I was at Hearts, and I'd get back and I'd be on the PlayStation for six, seven hours. So I thought it's it's probably more proactive to try and put my put my my time into something else, um, constructive and. Hopefully, when when my career is finished, I can I can transition straight into that, and that can kind of take over as my, as my main focus. What uh, what? Obviously, I'm probably the wrong target audience. Um, what what sort of style of clothing is it? Well, these are the bottoms here, actually. So just everyday streetwear, um, similar to what Will's got on myself right now. Um, but I probably enjoy the business side of it more than than the clothes, actually. So. Yeah, it's something I've, I'm quite passionate about now, um, business and, you know, I do online courses and stuff, trying to further my education in it, because I never did anything to do with business at school, so when I started it, I didn't really have a clue what I was doing, made a lot of mistakes, but, you know, you learn from them. So, you will be going for the Gareth Bale route, will you, Will, in terms of when you retire from football, going to, into golf? <laughs> Telling everyone my business idea, yeah. <laughs> obviously, you know. um, yeah, no, I've played, played since I was, since I could walk, really. Um, I'm still a member of a course back in Bournemouth, um, and I play for the club, like, represent them against other clubs when I can. Um, my mate's the captain of a couple of the teams within the club, so when I signed down here, he said, you've got no excuse now, you're an hour and 50 minutes away, not five hours. So he wants me back on Sunday afternoons to play, play with him. Um, but no, it's definitely, uh, listen, I won't be turning pro. The, the levels of those guys, is uh, it's, they play a different game. Um, they were saying I used to play, well, I've played with a lot of pros in, in my time. I've had mates that have tried to turn pro and they'll be the first one to tell you it's, you know, they were just so out of the depth. Playing the best they've ever played, but so out of the depth at, at the same time. Um, no, but it's, a, it's definitely, it's, uh, it's, it's a great sport. It's a great, on your days off, you know, you put your phone in your bag and you just have... Good bit of crack with two, three mates and, and stretch your legs. Yeah, it's good. Fantastic. Um, one last sort of formal question from me before we uh, again perhaps go to the floor or go to the internet. Um, as you know, Exeter are a supporters owned trust, a supporters owned. Uh, we, we, the, the supporters own the, own the club. 
do you feel that in the in the ethos and style of how the club's managed as a player? Do you understand where how that has happened, and is that fed into to what you do? Yeah, I mean, we've obviously know kind of the outline of how everything has happened and the transition of that. Um, you know, the club's in a in a fantastic place at the moment. It's it's definitely like I've like I've said earlier, it's a it's a real real family feeling club. Um, so yeah, it's like I said, it's it's in a great place. It's um, you know, I think it's a great advert for other clubs to maybe look at going down this route as well. Do you think the sort of the, the multi millionaire owner is is a dangerous concept for a club maybe that's sort of this size? They can sort of get fed up with it and move it on and or run it into the ground? Yeah, I mean it can be. Look, I've been a I've been at a club um, that sadly, you know, went bust at, at Berry. And it's, it, I can tell you now, it's not nice. Obviously, you'll, you'll know that coming quite close, I think you were to, yep. to happen. In, uh, so, yeah, it's, it's terrible. I was, I've been at Blackpool where they were having owner troubles at the time with, with Oysters. Um, you know, it's, it's, it isn't nice. So, I don't, yeah, it can be a bad thing. You know, it can be a good thing, it, but it also can be a bad thing. It's never really concrete, I don't think, sometimes, with those types of people in charge. Whereas here, everything, you know, there's a, is ran in the right way. You can definitely you can definitely tell that. Uh, okay. Uh, any any more questions from the floor? Or Craig, anything on the internet? No, it's quite quiet tonight. It's quite quiet tonight. So we put them to sleep. I mean, sorry, they, we're obviously doing, asking the right questions. They're all on his clothing website. They're all, so. <laughs> they're all yeah. They're all shopping online <laughs> with the Demi's uh, website. A question for both of you. Um, if you watched the last quarter of an hour of the Fulham Manchester United match on Sunday, did you learn anything from it? Did you watch it? Yeah, I did watch it actually. <laughs> um, did I learn anything from it? I'm quite disciplined to be fair, so now it's all right. <laughs> did you learn anything from it? I was actually in IKEA. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yeah, I was in IKEA, the range, the lot, flat, uh, flat pack assembly, all that, all that. What didn't I get? I just met my girlfriend at the till and said, in, I got a trolley and said, enjoy yourself. I meet you at the till. Um, no, uh, I've seen bits of it. Um, probably keep your head is is one thing um, I take from that. I think we can all be a bit hot headed, hot headed at times, some more than others, I'd say. Yeah, speak for myself. I might have got a bit angry at the weekend. Uh, but yeah, I'd just say that. Try and control, your, control yourself. There's a question for both of you. Um, attended a meeting earlier this week with the, the, the ladies' football manager, and she said in their game that they, the referee has a blue card. So if anybody shows dissent, they're given a blue card and they're sent sin bin for 10 minutes. Would you like to see that introduced into your level of football or would you feel that you would be spending too many 10 minutes in the, off the pitch? I think it would be five aside, but <laughs> <laughs> five minutes into the game if we had the blue card. Uh, it is a trial. Right? Is it? Yeah. It's um, a trial, but you see so much dissension yeah. at, at, and talking about the Fulham match and so on, yeah. you know, the, the captain should be the one that approaches the referee, but he seems to be the last one rather than the first one because all the players are crowding round. So it could be a good, good way of stopping that. Yeah, I think, it, I think it would be a good way of stopping it, to be honest. Um, you know, you look at, obviously it's different, but rugby, rugby especially rugby union, um, you, you do that and you're off or you do that and you are Simbin straight away and it's quite formal. I don't think it would get to that extent in football but um, you know it's as captains it's, it is your responsibility and you know we speak to the rest before the game and a big thing is you can't crowd the ref and you obviously can't say certain certain things to the ref um, obviously I have to respect the fact that it's you're in a game of football it's emotion it's it's everything so you're gonna probably step out of line at some point like I say some more than others um, but now it's, it's, I think it's something that could, could probably help. I didn't know they were doing it, to be honest. I didn't know um, they were trialling it, so. No, I don't mind it for, um, for, dis for, for dissent, to be fair. I think it's, um, 
a good idea, especially towards the back end of the game when, you know, you're just getting a little yellow card for even stuff like time wasting. It's a yellow card at the, in, the, in the last five minutes. It's not really going to do much. So something like that could could be beneficial because it'll, it'll stop time wasting and, and silly crowding a referee wasting, which also wastes time as well. Um, <clears throat> just, uh, I always ask this question about our match day officials. Uh, and sometimes how good or bad they might be. As a player, it must be frustrating at times when some of these decisions must be baffling. Would you, I and mean, then just how do you sort of for me, cont contain yourself, shall we say? Sometimes it's, it's the answers that the referees give. So I remember I was playing here, I can't remember who it was against now, but I've gone down in the box. I got, it was, I got clipped in the box, and um, I've asked the referee when the ball's gone out of play, why wasn't it given? He said, we didn't appeal enough. So, you know, what can you do? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's one thing. And then this weekend, there was a nudge in the back that I got when I went up for a header. And he said, oh, you've already had one penalty. So, so you know, there's little things that they say which, which wind, me, wind me up the wrong way. And then we've got problems with descent. So, you know, <laughs> well. Yeah, similar. Um... You know, I've had a theory, I try and, you know, if the refs make a good decision, I'll try and almost congratulate them. And you want them on your side, really, at the end of the day, because you, you never know when you might need a, a decision at the end of the game. So, as much as I've probably said things in the past, I shouldn't, like I say, you, you do get emotional when you play. Um, I think they're going to they're gonna get stuff wrong. Um, obviously, it becomes frustrating if it's more than not. Um, so yeah, I didn't really know they said that to you. I'm getting emotional now thinking about it. <laughs> I think we should move on, because <laughs> this is being recorded. <laughs> so some very quick fire questions. Best player you've ever come across, you played against? I think, when I was at Hull, Hatton Ben Arthur came on loan from Newcastle. Um, I doubt he's watching this, so I can't say this. <laughs> But no, he was, um, the talent he had was, was incredible. When he, but it was always when he wanted, when he wanted to do it. He didn't have the most um, smoothest of times at Hull. Um, it was a bit turbulent, to be honest. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think he's the best player I've, I've played with. Dimitri, best, best player you've come across? Um, I'd say best player I've played with um, all-round game, Paul Pogba. Wayne Rooney as well, obviously, but it was towards the back end of his career. So, you know, there's things that Paul would do in training that, you know, it was just unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. Playing against, I'd say, Ian Robben. And I was at Munich or Mo Salah as well when I was on tour. He, he wasn't bad. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Um... Best dressed person in the, in, the, in the dressing room, obviously after Dimitri, who's the best, in, in the dressing room, best Ooh. dressed player? I back myself to be fair, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd say, I don't mind Joe White, you know, I don't mind Joe White at all, he's got a few nice pieces. Is it John West as well? Uh, well, yes, please, yes, of course, <laughs> yes. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I'm going there. Uh, are you going to pass or are you going to... Uh... No, I'm getting right into this. <laughs> someone deserves it. There's someone in our team that has been wearing off-white trainers very, very consistently every single day. I don't know if you know what off-white trainers are. It's a brand. It's quite an expensive brand and they are tattooed to his feet. He must have some sort of sponsorship deal with off-white. I won't name a name, but he'll know exactly, exactly who he is. So. Maybe what position they play in the... Um, no, I'll, no. Tell you, I'll give a clue. He signed in... That's definitely... No, 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 it won't. He's, he's signed in January. Okay. All right. And it's not one of us either. <laughs> <laughs> and who bosses the music in the dressing room? Yeah, Timmy's had a go. Caprice? Caprice, um, yeah, we, we, share, we share it, to be fair. So he took it off me this weekend, actually. Uh, I had a few tracks I wanted to play lined up, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's it, uh, and on the bus, or is, it, is that like a different, different um, vibe on the bus? Not really on a bus, to be fair. If we've won, travelling back, maybe. Um, but no, I, I, I know it's a big difference on the bus, travelling down compared to, you know, travelling to the game from the hotel. You know, it's a completely different vibe. People have got their headphones in. People have uh, got a routine going to the game. So now on the bus, 
a lot of cards get played. Not for money, though. <laughs> <laughs> and any superstitions? Any, any sort of crazy superstitions in the, in the dressing room? I don't know. I have to splash three bits of water in my face before I go out to warm up and before I go out to, uh, to go out the tunnel to, to, to start the game. I don't know why. I've just always done it. And then a jump. When, when we walk out the tunnel and I step over the line, I just do a jump. Nothing exciting. It's a bit strange, that actually, now I think about it. But yeah, I've just always, just always done that. Do you? For me, if you see that I've changed boots, unless that the pitchers needed a, a mould, then if I've changed boots, that, that means I think I've had a bad game the week before. So it's the boots fault, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I notice Sweeney's always has a particular... Just before kick-off, he always has a particular move. He'll come down to uh, the goal area, run past the box, and then jump up and practice a header. He's done it the all. I don't know if anybody, anybody else has watched it for the last three or four seasons. He always does that just before kickoff. Oh, is it, yeah? Yeah. Oh, it's quite, quite, quite interesting. That's his, that's his routine. Um, here's the comedian in the, in the dressing room. Perks. <laughs> Perks, yeah, I can believe that. Yeah. Um, does he ever stop talking? <laughs> He's a good laugh, to be fair. Um, I don't know. Who would you say? I don't know, you know. Everyone chips in, don't they? Yeah. Jamesy thinks he's funny, doesn't he? Scotty? Yeah. That is not funny at all. <laughs> <laughs> Caprice is quite funny. Yeah. Like a little banter and that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kev? Yeah, Kev, Kev, Kev's, Kev's quite funny, yeah. Yeah, he has a goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has a Scottish sense of humour, does he? I can't understand him sometimes. <laughs> Okay, couple of a uh, couple of other questions for me. How do you keep your trainers so white? These. How are they so white? These are on the way out. These. These have got maybe two more wears left in them. <laughs> 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 My friend's got a shoe cleaner business actually in Manchester, so I use them quite often. Okay, so, so they get shipped up there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I get a question I always ask for visitors to Devon. So jam on top or cream first on your scone? It's a big like thing down here in Devon. I mean, is it? I feel like I've answered this before and answered it wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you how I don't have it. <laughs> no, I actually put the cream first. <laughs> it is cream first, isn't it? Yeah, that's not the last one. Anything butter, cream, anything. So that's right. That is how I'd have it. Good, man. That's the right answer. All right, good. You can, nice you can stay. I can sleep easy tonight. Anyway. <laughs> It's a scone, no? A scone? A scone or scone? A scone, yeah, a scone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody else? One, one sort of anybody else? Yes, madam. Hi. Um, I appreciate you haven't been here that long, but so far have you had a particular moment that's been like a standout moment for you? Standout moment for me? Um, I'd probably just say the first goal that I scored, you know, it was so quick after coming on. I hadn't played football probably in about 12 months, so I was quite nervous, to be honest. I, I don't really get nervous for games after I'm, I'm playing consistently, but not playing for so long. You know, I was worried about, like, fitness and, you know, just... And to score so quickly, you know, it kind of set up my nerves, so I'd say that was probably... probably even though the result wasn't, wasn't great on the day, I'd say that was my biggest moment, yeah. Uh, I'd probably say captain in the club for the first time. Um, it's not something I'd, I've done that much in my career. Uh, I've had it a few times, but um, yeah, I'd say that was a big moment for me, you know, for the family and stuff um, that we're watching. So yeah, I'd say lead, leading the boys out for the first time. Anybody else? Yeah, it's for Will. Was there a surprise to find out that Bolton were letting you go? Because you know, a lot of fans, their fans were sad to see you go. So did it come out of the blue? Um, I mean, it was. There's such a big squad at Bolton. Um, I think the cold, obviously on a smaller scale, but it was a similar to to Man City in a way where we had that many players, and you know, no one likes to be a fringe player, but there seems there's going to be fringe fringe players in every squad. But I think every single one of the players in the squad believed they should be playing and were good enough probably to go into any team really in League One. So um, the game time I was getting wasn't as 
frequent as I'd have liked. It'd kind of be play four games, not play five games, and play one game, miss three games, play three games, miss one And it was hard to get any sort of consistency and kind of a run going. Um, you know, all part of the reason coming down here was, was to get that. Um, you know, I enjoyed it. There was a great place to play, and, you know, they were obviously pushing to go up. Um, but I think this club really, you know, enticed me and everything the gaffer said. I think we'll both say, you know, all the fans and the players, all the staff, everyone at the training ground stadium has, has made us feel very welcome. Um, didn't take us long to, to settle in and, and feel part of it. You mentioned family there, and I overheard a conversation earlier that your mum's really pleased that you're in Exeter because she doesn't have to travel five hours up to Bolton to watch you play. Uh, well, there's no excuse for them uh, to, to not miss a game now. Um, now, they haven't, they, I mean, they come and watch as much as they can. Um, obviously, it's a long way to go. Most of my career has been up north. Um, you know, I don't expect them to do a 10 hour round trip every Saturday to come and watch me. Um, I wouldn't want them doing that, to be honest. My dad would rather be on the golf course, to be honest. So. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, it's great it's great for them to to be able to come and watch and you know just travel on the day. Um, you know, like I said, brothers just had a little boy, so it'd be great to go and and see him and um, just go and go and see all my other family and, and mates back home that I don't really get to see. Um, so yeah, Dimitri, do, you, do your family come and come and watch you play? Yeah, my dad's coming down um, tomorrow actually. So yeah, he's coming down to see the little one, his granddad now. So. He has to make he has to make time to come down. Um, Mum's down the week after, so yeah, now they come down. Yeah, it's important for me. It's important for me to be fair. Fantastic, fantastic. Gents, is there any questions that you want to ask of the fans? Or anything you want to say before we wrap it up? Don't have to. If you don't want. What do you expect, or what would what do you think is a realistic goal for us? For the end of this, before the end of the season. So, <laughs> as a as a Sheffield United fan, I'd like you to beat Sheffield Wednesday first. Um, but this ties into a question I was going to ask a minute ago, leading on from that. But this season, I think you've exceeded most people's expectations. And certainly as a new, I'm going to use the word fan, he'll probably appreciate that, but not my first team, but I'll certainly say I'm a fan now. Going forward, I think the expectation should be perhaps set a lot higher, not to put pressure on, but I can see what's happening on the pitch. You can see what the manager's trying, <coughs> excuse me, and you can see that it's working. And so from my side, if I was an Exeter City fan, proper fan, I'm a part-time fan, I'll I'd be really excited now. I think that you can see what is happening, you can see how it's going. And so I'd revert the question back to you guys. This season, you finished best of the rest. I think that's a great achievement. Um, next season, you've alluded earlier on to perhaps touching that top eight, top six. Personally, I would say the way you're playing and the way it is going, I'd think playoffs. Um, and not, like I say, not to put pressure on, but as a, as a realistic expectation, I think it's really exciting to be an Exeter City fan now. Um, the way that the club's run, fan, you know, fan owned, and the way that <clears throat> people have been bought in in January, exciting. Not to blow smoke up anybody's whatever here, but you know, it's nice to see, nice to see new blood coming in. And yeah, I'd, I'd be really excited. So I'll, I'll flip the question. Um, do you think that? <clears throat> do you think that's a, that's an achievable ambition? Well, I think you know, if if you finish in a top ten or the top half of the table this season, obviously the next season, especially with the manager would have been here longer, transfer windows, new training facilities, you know, you always want to build on where you finished the season before. So, as you said, a top 10 finish this year, which is what we'd be looking at, hopefully, or a top half finish, then building on that, you know, if you're in the mix of the top eight, you're always in the mix of the playoffs. So I think that's a realistic ambition, personally, yeah. Yeah, I think, touching on that as well, um, I think if someone had said to you at the start of the season, you're going to finish 10th this year, I'd, I'd say you'd have probably snatched his hand off. Um, so I think it's definitely, it, it definitely would be a good return. Um, but I think at the same time, we don't want to 
get comfortable. As much as that would be brilliant and a great achievement, we have to always want more, be hungry for more. Um, you know, I spoke a lot about this with the gaffer and a couple of the boys that, you know, coming from a team that's been around that playoff position consistently for the whole season and meant to be one of the best teams in the league, um, there really isn't much in it. Like, I actually think the way we've played recently, we've, uh, we've dominated games probably more than I did at, at my previous club. Um, I think it's just the fine margins of being ruthless in, in both boxes, um, whether that's defending or, or attacking, and the consistency of it. Um, I think that's the reason why they're up there. As much as the talent and the, the performances of games, I, I really don't think there's a lot, a lot in it. It's just the consistency of doing it week in, week out. That's why you know, they're at the top of the league. I'd say finishing the top half would be great, but if you could both just throw in a victory over Argyle with you both scoring, that would be better. <laughs> oh, that, would be, uh, that would be nice 2-0. A little Demi and Ameson double would be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah. Free kick, get your head on it. Yeah, or on the yeah, yeah, we'll take that. It'd be nice if you could land one on my head for once, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, yeah, that's, uh, that's something we'll, we'll all be striving for, definitely. Yeah, well, when are we going to score from a corner? Oh. <laughs> Soon, hopefully. I'm, uh, I'm crying out for a goal, to be honest. Yeah, it's been a while, so... OK. Uh, unless there's anything else from anybody? Um, Craig, anything on the, on the internet? No? OK. Well, Will and Dimitri, it's been fantastic. Thank you for taking your time out to, you. to come and, and join us. It's been great chatting to you. Hope you've enjoyed it. No, that's been very good. And, thank you, thank um, you. There's one last job to do. Just do some raffle prize ticket draw. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Fantastic. That's fine. The, uh, the money tonight will be going to uh, MND, uh, our charity we're, we're helping to support this year. As you know, Chris Evely from the Community Trust, uh, unfortunately, has got it, as has Marcus Stewart, ex-player. So we're raising money for MND. So we'll do the draw in a minute. Just a couple of notices from Supporters Trust, just to remind you... Uh, the early bird season tickets go on sale on the 31st next week. Uh, and also by the 10th of April, can you please nominate your supporter of the year so we can uh, get that awarded. Um, congratulations to the media team and Richard Knight, all the work he does on fan engagement. And once again, we're top of the table for fan engagement. Remember, that's across all four leagues. So Little Exeter is number one for the fourth year in a row. So that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, and finally, uh, well, there are two finalies. Um, this Friday at um, Heavertree Cemetery, there is a little memorial service going on for Arthur Chadwick, who was one of uh, our driving managers in the 20s, uh, both played for Accrington Stanley and for Exeter and then went on to manage Exeter. His grave is being rededicated. Gary Corbell's going to be there. Meet at St Mark's Avenue entrance at four o'clock and that's all been organised by the museum. Talking of the museum, they've organised with Topsham Museum a Dick Pym exhibition. Uh, another Exeter, Exeter legend from many years ago, Topsham resident Dick Pym, and there's going to be an exhibition about him uh, from the 7th of April. Um, Ryan, could you stand up, Ryan, please? Just for a bit of embarrassed, Ryan, for 10 seconds. Can I introduce you to Ryan Ilnott? Ryan is the new Trust Membership Secretary. So welcome on board, good luck with your role. And talking of secretaries, we are still looking for a, uh, um, a trust secretary, as Phil Burden very rudely goes off and travels around the world from, uh, from May, so we are looking for a new trust secretary. Details of all of that is on the club website or the Supporters Trust website. So. Many thanks for coming. Thanks for watching on uh, on the YouTube. Hope you've enjoyed it. We have got plans for um, for more fans forums like this. We're hoping to uh, one for um, boys from the back room. Uh, we're also going to try and get Gary back. 
after the end of the season, talk, do a little review of the season. We're also trying to get Abby and um, Aaron for the women's team to do a, a, a have a fans forum as well. So keep your eyes peeled. Uh, we have got other forums planned going forward. And finally, big thank you again to Will and Dimitri. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's fine. No problem. So, uh, we'll draw to the draw.